Okay. Uh, good morning, all of you. Uh, here we are going to be talking about introduction to networking. Uh, I think this is not a new concept because we have gone through this uh, before. However, we need to clarify a number of things when we talk about computing. You cannot have computers without having a network and you think you will work with computers. Somehow, somewhere, one thing leads to the other. At first, you have computers and they are working in isolation. However, with, due to sharing of information, we are going to end up connecting to all more computers and we shall net, uh, have what we call uh, local area networks, wide area networks. We shall also have uh, something as big as internet coming through networks. So here we're going to talk about the basics of networking computers. And we are going to start with... Um, Okay, so those are the references. I'll be able to have actually already sent them in your notes when you check your notes. However, I'm also go going to record this class so that I'm able to send it to those people who have not been able to be part of this class. They'll be able to download this and they will be able to view it on their own. So what is a network? When someone tells you a network, they're talking about uh, two or more computers which are connected together and they can communicate and share resources. The resources can be information, that is software resources, or they can even be hardware resources. For example, when you look at this image below, you are able to see, um, get a highlighter here. So when you look at that, you are able actually to see that uh, there are, there, there is a computer, there is a server, there's another computer and a computer, but they are all able to share the resource. The common resource is now this computer here. So uh, this is what a, a network enables us to do. You have a shared resource, which is, um, which is a, com uh, a printer, which is connected to one of the computers, and all these other computers are able to print using that one printer. So imagine, uh, all your tutors have print uh, have computers in their offices. However, they are using a single printer to print the notes. So they all don't have to be with a printer in their own offices. That would be redundancy and also duplication of resources. Imagine how much money you will need to buy a printer for every tutor. Yet you can have one printer and then you connect all their computers to that single printer. Okay, Jacqueline, you're welcome. I'm seeing Jacqueline is trying to connect. All right. Um, as she's still trying to connect. So we can continue. We can share information, for example, data communication. When you look at data communication, uh, do you prefer this? Uh, you can have two computers and they are sharing uh, resources using a flash disk. You have uh, maybe Sasha has a computer, Soren has a computer. However, you need to take your flash to Sasha's computer, pick the notes, then uh, take that flash to uh, Soren's computer and then copy the notes uh, onto that computer. That is so troublesome because it will take a lot of time. Um, the other option would be that would be the next option. Just have all the computers on one network and they're able to share resources uh, east and west. So you do not have to go through the whole idea of who has a flash, you come to class. Dear students, who has a flash because you want to share notes with them? No, that's not important. That's not necessary. All you have to do is create a network for them and you'll be able to share the resources. So sharing hardware or software. Uh, I've given you this example of having, uh, having every tutor's office having a printer connected to their computer. You can choose to buy uh, printers for every tutor or instead you can choose to have a single printer and you just connect all their computers on one network and they'll be able to use that single printer. So that is cost effective. So how many kinds of networks do we have? 
Depending on one's perspective, we can classify networks in different ways. For example, we have a classification of categorization of, of, uh, of networks based on transmission media. When we talk of transmission media, we are either talking about wired networks or wireless networks. I'm sure all of us have seen wired networks. For those who have seen our computer lab down there, you see that uh, every computer, every desktop in the computer lab is, ra is running a cable. Let me see if I have such a cable around here. So uh, you have you have All right, I hope you are hearing me again. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so I was trying to explain transmission media. Based on transmission media, you have such a cable and this cable connects one computer to the other. All it connects the computer to a network device and you are able to share uh, the, net, the network. Now, we also have wireless networks. I hope you have all seen that wireless network, which is up there in uh, where you study from where there are your classes we have we have wi-fi network there whereby you don't need a cable to connect however all you need to connect is um your gadget connecting to a wireless device and then you'll be able to get uh, the network so we shall also look at the different types of wired and wireless networks so based on ne uh, network size we can classify networks according to network size for example, you have a local area network, what we call the LAN. Uh, the LAN is a small network which can cover either your office or it can cover a class. For, for example, imagine you are six people in my class and you all have computers. When you people are able to communicate with each other on the network, that means we have a local area network. It can cover an office, it can cover a building or a small location. So we shall talk about also the wide area networks, etc. Uh, then we have we can also classify networks based on the management method. We have peer-to-peer -peer and client server. We shall also talk about those ones. We also have networks based on the topology. Topology, we are talking about the layout or the connectivity. Uh, we have bus, we have star, we have ring, etc. We shall also discuss those ones. So, based on transmission media, we have guided, that is, that is the one I explained as cables. Uh, you guide the network using cables or wires. We also have uh, unguided. Uh, for unguided, uh, we are actually talking about uh, radio, microwave, infrared, uh, sound, sonar, etc. Now, when we talk about wi wireless networks, wireless networks, we have seen all these ones. If at all you have ever shared anything, if at all you have ever shared anything with, uh, with your friend using Zender, you have shared something using Bluetooth, all those are microwave. Uh, those are microwave uh, wireless networks. So I'm sure all of you have used Zender before, they have used Bluetooth before, you have used transfer, 
etc uh yes ismail you have a question i saw you raising your hand i thought you had uh, a question okay we can still we, we can proceed um so um when we talk of infrared infrared means uh, there is a, there must be a point of contact between the two uh between the two points for example if i tell you have ever used a remote if you have ever used a remote control the remote control has a sensor which you point into the tv the tv also has a sensor so that kind of connection between the two devices the remote control and the tv so that you can be able to change the channel that is what we call infrared so uh, we shall also talk about other transmission media so but during this class we are going to particularly concentrate on uh, on, on, on guided media, that is uh, the cable. Uh, media which requires you to use a cable to connect one computer to the other. That is where we are going to put more emphasis. So we have three basic types of uh, transmission media under, under guided media. We have twisted uh, pair cables, we have coaxial cables, and we have fiber optic. For twisted pair, Twisted pair is the one we usually use for, we use twisted pair basically for networks. When you cut a network cable inside, you are going to see lots of wires inside. Uh, when we got the computer lab, when you are back to school, I'll be able to show you uh, these cables physically. So it has lots of cables inside and they're twisted. They are used basically to, uh, to transfer network from one location to the other. Uh, uh, secondly, we have coaxial cable. Whoever, whoever has a TV antenna at home, you have seen a coaxial cable. That is that cable which runs from your antenna outside and it enters into your TV. And where it enters from, it has a single copper wire inside uh, where it enters from uh, to enter your TV. Whether entering a decoder or entering your TV, it has a single copper wire entering. So that's what we call a coaxial cable. It is also used to carry network from one location to the other. Finally, we have what we call twisted pair. Uh, for, for, sorry, not twisted pair, fiber optic cable. For a fiber optic cable, it actually uses, just like here, the name optic. So fiber optic, it uses a cable, it uses light to carry data from one location to the other. So uh, let me see if I can get my pen here and I draw for you something. So basically, you have your cable and but <laughs> 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 Network is okay. Uh, don't, uh, Ismail, don't put on the video because you'll be taking a lot of our data. So I hope you can be able to see. Do you see this drawing I've just put down here? Mm -hmm. so, yes. So this is a, a net a cable whereby inside here is a glass. This inside here is a glass. So light travels within the glass, a heating on the both sides of, of the glass. It just hits on the walls of the glass, and that's how light moves. I, I, all network moves within the fiber optic. So basically. Fiber optic cables are very, very nice when it comes to transmitting network over long distances. When you see people who are digging along the lines, people who dig along the roads, eh, 
no la banga basi but they are laying some cables basically in most cases they are actually uh, they are actually laying fiber optic cables uh, you have seen google laying its cables mtn uh, airtel etc when you see them digging along the roads and burying some things there most is, uh, most probably if it is not water then they are burying cables uh, for fiber optic because fiber optic can carry network over long distances which the other ones cannot carry so uh, according to uh, we can we said we can classify according to the network coverage or the geographical coverage so we have local area network for local area network I, as i explained mm. it has uh, it has computers in the same maybe building all in the same classroom and you're able to share resources so that is local area network uh, you have what we call a personal area network Pan, person area network. Each one now, right now, where I am right now, I have a personal area network. I have my computer connected on my headset, connected on my phone, etc. Using Bluetooth, so that is a personal area network. When you have many person area networks in one place, then it becomes a local area network. When you connect many local area networks, you come up with you come up with a wide area network. So imagine, uh, take an example, a network inside the student's computer room, and you also have a network at your home. So basically, we have just created a wide area network right now. That I'm here at my place, I have my personal area network. Uh, you are also at your place, you also have a local area network at your home. Then even someone who is in the computer room has also their local area network. Now, when we are able to connect like we have just done right now online, we now have a wide area network. So, uh, look at this. So, you have your student center, it, is, it has a local area network, you are able to connect it to maybe uh, Botul Ismail is in USA and she has a local area network there. And then of course Sasha Flex is at her home. She also has a local area network. At the end of the day, we are having a wide area network. And it is from this wide area network, which we call one, that we get what we call the internet so we shall be able to discuss the internet i hope you have already seen the notes for internet in the next uh in actual lecture three we also have notes about the, uh, the internet any questions so far oh. Okay. So uh we can connect, we can have we can have uh networks classified according to uh the way the management methods. For example, peer to peer means like friend to friend, you don't have that um, uh, that administrative uh, component in your network. Just like you want to share resources and then you get a cable, plug it into one computer and plug into the other computer and you are able to share your song or any resource. So that is peer to peer. It is also called a work group. There is no hierarchy at all among members. They are all equal. Oh, yes. yes, Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline, let me try to be a little bit more. I think I'm very fast. Let me be slow so that you can understand. Hmm. Okay, so uh, we have two types of management when it comes to networks. Okay, Jacqueline, lower your hand. 
Okay. Uh, we have two types of networks. Uh, when it comes when it comes to management, we have two types of networks. You can have a peer-to-peer, -peer, or you have a client server. So for peer-to-peer, -peer, there is no who is playing songs. Okay. Uh, we have for peer-to-peer, -peer, there is no central administrator. You are all administering your own and uh, the network. There is no central administrator. However, we also have, uh, it has also advantages and disadvantages, like it is very easy to set up, low cost, simple to configure, because you have people like all of you as you are here, and you are all administrators. Have you ever been in a WhatsApp group whereby all of you are administrators? It is that easy, because anyone can do anything. So that is peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, when you talk of client server, you have a server computer, and all the other computers on that network are just clients. A client is a computer that requests for resources from the server. A server is a computer that manages and provides network resources to the other computers. For example, when you go to our clinic at Maldimay, that clinic, the, every, every, uh, every clinician, all every Musawo down there has a computer in their room. However, those computers do not, uh, they just receive services from our server. When they use Clinic Master, Clinic Master is installed on our servers. So these other computers use, uh, they just receive resources from the server. They don't manage those, uh, those resources. There are lots of advantages when it comes to client server. You are going to read through these ones and disadvantages. Uh, then we go to the final uh, classification of computers, which is based on topology. Uh, this is not new for anyone who has ever studied computers, at least somewhere in S1, S2. You have discussed computer topology. So topology basically means the layout of computers. Uh, it could be a stack topology, it could be a bus or ring. Uh, for stack topology, Start topology, we are talking about computers, yes, which, are connected to intro, computers which are connected to a central uh, device or connecting device in a star form. When you look at this, when you look at this image you're seeing right now, you are able to see that we have a central now we have device, been, uh, having a conversation about this one. Uh, but we also have, have during quarantine and we'll finish up that computers which are connecting to it yeah. like that. Yeah. So Again, that is now the start. That is the start yeah. of all. you have a central connecting device, mm -hmm. and then you have computers which are being connected mm -hmm. to that central yeah. device. So it is the central device that manages everything. So that is what we call a start topology. Okay. The next is uh, the bus topology. For the bus topology. Someone is watching this. Oh, it's super amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask you to mute the microphones. Uh, now, when, when you look at the bus topology, all the computers are connected to what we call a central uh, trunk. They are connected to what we call a trunk, a central cable which connects all the computers. So that is uh, what we call the bus topology. And for the ring topology, the ring topology, the computer is connected to another computer in a ring form. You can see the server happening. With the government advising people to stay in the same border as most be shopping and delivery services that brings your favorite food and special groceries right to your door. Yes. Uh, is this noise coming from faith? Uh, is it Don't me. Erwin, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Mute your microphone. That's better. I'm not the one. I'm not the one. Maybe. Okay, I think let me mute you all. 
I, you, you will no, learn. Sir, no, sir. You will, don't share. No, sir. Uh, okay, I think that's okay. Do we still have the feedback? Okay, all right, then I can go ahead. Uh, so this is ring topology whereby uh, all the computers, one computer is connected to the other, even with this one. So they form a ring. That means when you're sending information, it will have to go through all the other computers before it reaches its destination. It has its advantages and disadvantages. So you read through the bus topology, you read through the star topology, each of them has its advantages and disadvantages. And the ring topology, we shall talk about what we call token passing. I want you to be uh, keen on this diagram here and you see how uh, information moves in a ring topology. Uh, when you send it a, a token, it will go to another computer, then to another computer, until it reaches the final computer. Then th the data will be sent because it was requesting for data. Then there will be acknowledgement of receipt of data. So basically, I want you to remember how you used to do your things in, uh, in high school. If I tell you, you've ever written those notes, uh, you write a cheat. Maybe Faith is sending a cheat to Eric, and Eric is some students away. So basically, Eric will write, Eric will write as a note, maybe let's meet at break time, and send it to Ismail. Ismail will read on it and say, no, this, is, this, this belongs to, to, to Eric, not me. So he'll, she'll also forward it to Jacqueline. And Jacqueline, uh, up, up to when that cheat uh, reaches Eric, that means every, by the time uh, Eric gets the cheat from Faith, all the students in class have read that cheat. So that is what ring topology also does. Every computer that receives the information will have to read onto its address to see whether it is its information. If it's not, then it will forward it to the next computer until that uh, request reaches the computer where it's supposed to go. So that is how ring topology works. Okay, I think uh, Mukungu Enoch is joining. Let's come as always. Okay. Uh, we can also talk about what a fire.